In June of 1844, while Joseph Smith was on his way to Carthage jail, he told his brother Hiram and W. W. Phelps about a dream he had a few nights prior. W. W. Phelps did not publish the account until 1862, but when he did, he titled it Joseph Smith's Last Dream. While I was at Jordan's in Iowa the other night, I dreamed of myself and my brother Hiram went on board of a large steamboat, lying in a small bay near the great ocean. Shortly after we went on board, there was an alarm of fire, and I discovered that the boat had been anchored some distance from the shore, out in the bay, and that an escape from the fire in the confusion appeared hazardous. But as delay was folly, I and Hiram jumped overboard and tried our faith at walking upon the water. At first we sank in the water nearly to our knees, but as we proceeded we increased in faith and were soon able to walk upon the water. On looking toward the burning boat in the east, we saw that it was drifting toward a wharf and the town, with a great flame and clouds of smoke and, as if by whirlwind, the town was taking fire too, so that the scene of destruction and horror of the frightened inhabitants was terrible. We proceeded on the bosom of the mighty deep and were soon out of sight of land. The ocean was still. The rays of the sun were bright, and we forgot all the troubles of our Mother Earth. Just at that moment, I heard the sound of a human voice, and turning around, saw my brother, Samuel H., approaching toward us from the east. We stopped, and he came up. After a moment's conversation, he informed me that he had been lonesome back and had made up his mind to go with me across the mighty deep. We all started again, and in a short time, we were blessed with the first sight of a city whose gold and silver steeples and towers were more beautiful than any I had ever seen or heard of on earth. It stood, as it were, upon the western shore of the mighty deep we were walking on, and its order and glory seemed far beyond the wisdom of man. While we were gazing upon the perfection of the city, a small boat launched off from the point, and almost as quick as a thought came to us. In an instant they took us on board and saluted us with a welcome and with music such as is not on earth. The next scene, on landing, was more than I can describe. The greeting of old friends, the music of a thousand towers, and the light of God himself at the return of three of his sons soothed my soul into a quiet, a joy, that I felt as if I was truly in heaven. I gazed upon the splendor. I greeted my friends. I awoke, and lo, it was a dream. While I meditated upon such a marvelous scene, I fell asleep again. And behold, I stood near the shore of the burning boat, and there was a great consternation among the officers, crew, and passengers of the flaming craft, as there seemed to be much ammunition or powder on board. The alarm was given that the fire was near the magazine, and in a moment, suddenly, it blew up with a great noise and sank in deep water with all on board. I then turned to the country east, among the brushy openings, and saw William and Wilson Law, endeavoring to escape from the wild beasts of the forest. But two lions rushed out of the thicket and devoured them. I awoke again. 